Barakat Yahweh, Barakat Yahweh Shai, Kol Halayim La Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Barakha Hakodash, which means all praises to Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham is in the name. Yahweh Shai is the name of His only begotten Son, who the world only called Jesus Christ. Barakha Hakodash means in the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, the only way we can worship the Father and the Son. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel and truth and in sincerity, always in charity. It's the brother Mathathia from the Great Millstone Camp, the branch on Des Moines. And um, not sure what I'm entitled to this just yet, but um, I'm going to just get right into it. This is the book of uh, 1 Peter 4 and 12. It says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Right. And we catch hell all throughout this walk, man. Right. Because hey, it, it, it says that um we were. Let's, let me grab that. This is uh, 1 Thessalonians 3, and I start at the top. It says, Wherefore, when we could no longer forbear, we thought it good to be left at Athens alone and sent Timotheus, our brother and minister of the Most High, and our fellow, and our fellow laborer, our fellow laborer in the gospel of Yahweh Shai, to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith. That no man should be moved by these afflictions for yourselves. Know that we are appointed there unto. For verily, when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation, even as it came to pass. And ye know. So we're appointed unto these things. Why is that? Right. The Lord said he have chosen us in the furnace of, uh, uh, of, of affliction in Isaiah. I believe it's the 48th chapter, the 10th verse. So going through these sufferings and these different things purifies us, right? According to Hebrews 2 and 10, Yahweh Shah was made perfect through the sufferings that he went through. So how much more us, right? But it's, it, but it's a perception. So when we going through the fire, when we're going through certain situations, it's a perception of how um, we perceive those things, man. When we're in those moments, how do we view those things? You see? And we must view it. What properly we must view it rightly or accurately, you see, and I'm gonna get the scripture to, uh, to show forth that right. But I'm gonna get this go back to first Peter four and twelve. It says, beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Right. We got Job for an example of that, man. You see, because within this walk, man, what we're doing was right now is Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. As it as as it said about Job, he was an upright man. He eschewed with evil, right? Same thing as us. We vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. We're doing what the Lord to, commanded us to do, right? But yet we catch this hell, you see. And at times, you might even be like, "Well, Lord, like I'm doing everything you said. Why am I catching hell uh, uh, at this rate? Or or why am I going through this at this um, 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 capacity? For lack of a better word, man, <laughs> right?" But see, the things that are written aforetime are written for our learning, man. See, this book literally perfects our thinking and our mind towards Yahweh, why Yahweh shot. As Romans 12 and 2, it says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed with the renewing of our mind that we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Lord. So we may be perfect as our father in heaven is perfect. So we may understand what the Lord plan is here on this earth, man. You see, so when we read the book of Job, we know that the Lord, that Job was, was the Lord bragged on Job. See, it's the same thing as us. The Lord is bragging on us. Right. But taking that, that the book of Job into account, what is what is the spiritual demon Satan doing? He's like, look, well, Lord, if I do this to him. He won't serve you no more. If I touch this, he won't serve you no more. So the Lord gave Satan that leave to go do those certain things. Right. His woman turned against him. Satan hopped on his woman. His children got took from him. His riches, his wealth was stolen from him. His health was taken from him. And the last thing was what? His friends that came to mourn with him, they even condemned him because of the things that he was suffering. 
You see? His friends was looking like, man, hey, the only reason you're going through this is because you got to be wicked. Which they didn't have no evidence of, which is why the Lord was mad at them. And Job, in his mind, he was like, but man, like, I, I know I ain't been wicked. I know I've been serving the Lord. The Lord is just whooping my ass. He's just mightier than me. How can I contend with him? Like, when you act, because Job felt like he didn't deserve to go through what he was going through, man. And then the one that had the proper counsel was the young man who sat there and waited and listened to all their reasoning. He asked Job, he said, is, is, is you more righteous than the Most High? So we have to ask ourselves, are we more righteous than the Most High? Hell no. Right? And at the end, the chariot appeared. The Most High started talking out of the cloud, out of that chariot. And he had to check Job. And Job acknowledged like, yeah, you know. So it's the same thing as us. Whatever we going through, we deserve it. And actually, we're being punished less than what our iniquities deserve, man. Job got his wealth taken away. But who gave him that wealth in the first place? His wife turned against him, but who gave him that wife? His kids got taken from him, but who gave him those kids? You see? And this is what these scriptures is. is matter of fact, let me just get that. This is Sirach 2, and it's a staple scripture, man. You know, this is one of the uh, 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 the scriptures that's presented the most when, when, when brothers come into the faith. Just like that Thessalonians. Paul said what? You know we were appointed into these things. You were told about these things. It's the same thing as each and every last one of us coming into this faith. We were told this. It's Sirach 2 and 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. So we're going to get that first part right there. Set thy heart aright. You see, that's the key thing within enduring within this walk of ours. It's setting our heart aright. Now, what does that mean? It says a right definition. It says correctly, properly, the similar uh, or the synonyms, correctly, rightly, accurately, properly, exactly, precisely, perfectly. So now you see why I quoted Romans 12 and 2 about that perfect will of the most high. So that we may be perfect in our spirit, in our mind, so that we can understand the process that's taking place here on this earth. See, we can't get a, too attached to anything on this earth. The Lord gave it and he could take it away, as Job said. So when we go through these things, whether it be financial, whether it be uh, dealing with things with your woman, your children, your parents, or, or, or your job, whatever it may be, the Lord gave all those things. And those things are tested. We're in those positions of uncomfortability so that we're not too attached to those things, so that we're continually attached to Yahweh, why Yahweh Shah. Let's keep reading. Verse 3. Cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Look at Job. You see, at the end, Job got everything he had doubled. He got that back and doubled, man. He even seen his children that he lost. He seen them come again, man. It's like the woman in 2 Maccabees 7. She believed in her spirit wholeheartedly. She was fully persuaded that she would receive her sons again. That's why she encouraged those men to die manfully, man. And we must embody that mindset. And it's not easy, man. Hebrews, the 12th chapter. It tells us that the, the suffering of this present time is not joyous, but grievous. But afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruits of righteousness. You see, we must get these things within us. So when those things happen, that these precepts pop up in the forefront of our mind, man, because this is what comforts us. You see, and I got a couple quotes here. Pretty much about being uncomfortable, you know, and, and, and I just pick out a couple of them right here is a good one. It says, I would rather feel uncomfortable pushing for a better then feel uncomfortable settling for less, man. You see, any way it goes, we're going to be uncomfortable as it is written in second Edges the seventh chapter, the 18th verse. It says the righteous shall suffer straight things in a position of difficulty. That's when, when it's, it, you're not comfortable when something is difficult, right? It says the righteous shall suffer straight things and hope for the wide, but they that do wickedly shall suffer straight things and not see the wide. 
So they're going to go, they're going to be in an uncomfortable position for nothing. But this uncomfortable position that we're in, that we're being put through, is great glory at the end of that, man. And we're going to get that back in uh, uh, in, in Peter Lord's will, right? Um, to be successful, you must be comfortable with being uncomfortable. <laughs> you see? You have to learn how to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. You know, and the apostles, uh, uh, the uh, apostle Gabal and apostle Aramla, they tell the story that apostle uh, Taha told them that, man. And they, and they thought he was crazy when he first said that. But then they understood it later on. See, but the spirit have us on a crash course, man. We got to we got to understand these things, you know, at, 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 at a quicker rate. It speaks about how the, uh, um, the spirit of the Lord is a quickening spirit. Now, we know it means to make alive, but also uh, 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 to make us is uh, I want to say it's a scripture in Isaiah. Let me see if I can find that. Isaiah 11, I think. Man, this Isaiah 11 and 3. And shall make, and it's talking about our Lord Yahweh Shah, but what? We have the mind of Yahweh Shah, right? We're a part of that body. So this, this applies to us as well. Isaiah 11 and 3. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears, man. And, 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 and even this is talking about he's going to judge righteous judgment, right? But even um, this part where it says he shall he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, even within all situations, man. The way it look or the way it feel is 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 not the outcome of it. It's not the end all be all, you know. Hananiah, Azariah, Mishael, man, a a a, they could they, you know, they could have believed that it was the end, and but hey, man, they could have gave up. Bend the knee. No, but they didn't, man. You know? <clears throat> Daniel in the lion's den. They threw him in for praying. <laughs> you know? If I'm not mistaken, I hope I'm not mixing accounts, but uh, that's in the book of Daniel. You know? It was a decree that was given that he uh, that nobody should pray unto their own gods. And Daniel continued to pray, man. <clears throat> It's a lock in my throat starting to itch, you know? But remember, these things are written for our learning, man. The Lord gave us everything we have in this temporal world, man. And that's the key thing, temporal. Everything we have here is temporary. And the Lord gave us everything we got. You know? So we have to renew our mind. We have to set our mind aright. So from there, let's go back. First Peter 4 and 12 again. It says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice, and as much as ye are partakers of Yahweh Shai's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Man, You see, so to, to the outside world, how we move and how we think and how we function is cruel. But see, we under we got the perfect understanding of the Lord, man. We understand that what the Lord given us on this side is just temporary. And anything we might lose on this side, key thing, might lose. Because just because something might seem a certain way doesn't mean that that's what it's going to be at the end, right? So whatever we might lose, we're going to receive it back again, man. That's that hope. That's that belief. That's that faith. You see? According to Sirach, the sixth chapter, the Lord said he proved a, to prove a friend first, man. So it's a, it's a, a fiery trial, which is to try us, man. We're being proven. Just like Job. Satan went and tested Job, right? Job even said it, man. When I am tried, I shall come forth as gold. So it's the same thing with us within our trials and tribulations and our situations, whatever they may be, man, because they're tailor made to each and every last one of us. But just know 
that the same affliction is accomplishing your brethren in the world. Your situation ain't unique. It might be unique uh, 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 um, to the group of men that that, 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 that that's around you. But it's not unique as a whole, <laughs> you know. And even within that, a lot of times your situation ain't even unique to the men that's around you, man. Because those men have suffered it. Those men have been through it. And that gives extra motivation, you know, that the Lord was able to bring him through. Why, why can't the Lord be able to pull me through? Look, none of us suffered what Job suffered, man. <laughs> you know, look at what Job suffered, man. And that's why James used him. Salaki, I didn't mean to do that. But that's why James used him, right? This is the book of James 5 and 10. It says, take my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction and of patience. Behold, we count them happy, which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job. That word patience is sufferings. So we heard of the suffering of Job and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy, man. And once again, when you read the book of Job, man, Job, hey, 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 he, he, everything he lost, he got back double. Peter asks, well, we forsaken all and followed the Lehawashah said, man, you're going to get a hundredfold, man. So that's why the scripture says, man, hey, 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 I have not seen, ear have not heard what the Lord got prepared for us, man. So we can't be so caught up with the cares of this life, man. Or, or, or the things that comes to uh, being attached to this world. No, man. You know? Because Satan is going to come. If you too attached to anything, man, Satan is going to come and, 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 and test you on that, man. You know? And a lot of times, man, a, 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 a guys fail to, uh, 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 that test because they're too attached to certain. They're too attached to their woman or they're too attached to their finances or they're too attached to their children. That's why Yahweh Shah said that you have to love them less, man. This is the priority. This is the priority, you know? And that comes with the territory, man. It's not saying that you're not supposed to take. No, still do your duties as a man, you know? To the best of your ability, right? But this is why we can't be too attached to these things. Because those things can be used. This is the book of uh, Luke. It's 22, I'm sorry. It's the book of Luke. 22, man, I'll start at uh, 28. It says, ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. Continued. Set our heart aright and constantly endure. Suffering any and everything for the names of Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh Shah. As we just read in Peter. We're partakers of Yahweh Shah's suffering, so we're going to be a partaker of that glory to come if we endure. Verse 29, and I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father hath appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Man, come on, man. To receive that honor right there, you know, verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Now, when you go into that word sift, it's the Greek word siniazo, which means by, uh, to, it says figuratively, by inward agitation to try one's faith to the verge of overthrow. So how can, how can you be agitated so much in your mind to the verge of overthrow? It's through what? Your trials, your tribulations. The things that you go through, that's the book of Job. You see? But what do you have a shot tell us? See, and it's comforted within itself. Verse 32. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren, man. So we all go through hell. We all uh, be in those low moments, man. Hey, but you shall pray for us. You know, and the Lord pulls us through those moments. And when we're out of those moments, man. We use that, that, that um, it says the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted. Let me get that. It 
This is uh, 2 Corinthians 1 and 3. It says, Blessed be Yahweh, even the Father of our Lord Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, the Father of mercies and the power of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of the Most High. For as the sufferings of Yahweh Shah abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Yahweh Shai, man. Oh, man. You know? So we're not suffering and going through these things in vain. And there's a reason for it. There's a reason. It's so that we can cleave unto the Lord more so that we don't be too attached to these things that's here. Right? Appreciate it over the Lord's mercy because we deserve to be going through way, you know, much more. Right? And that also we're being purified so that we can be accepted in that day, man. That's setting our heart aright. Understanding of what and why we're going through these things, man. You know? So, I just hope this lesson is, uh, is comforting in the spirit, man. I hope it's edifying. But these things have to be in the forefront of our minds, man. You know? So, with that... Call Halal Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shah, the Wadi Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shah for giving me spirit to do this lesson. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel and truth. Shalom.